Hello, and welcome to another exciting Breakfast with Unity. I'm your host, Max Moreau, and today we're going to be playing around with some vector stuff. Um, so this episode is not going to be so directly useful for most people. Um, this is actually in preparation for um, a tutorial series I'd like to do in the future. I'm just going to make up a couple scripts that display vectors in the editor, um, and we'll just discuss a little bit about what I'm going to do on that show. Um, but uh, but yeah, for today, it's most, mostly just going to be um, on... On draw gizmos and uh, and drawing some lines to show where objects are relative to origin and relative to each other. So um, let's uh, let's just get started. So I'm going to create a just a cube, and we're going to offset it somewhere from the origin. I'm going to put it like five, ten, or something, and we're going to go over to the camera and set it up at zero zero. Well, not zero for the. And 5 and 10 is evidently too far, so let's just do 5 and 5. Does that show up on the scene at all? It does. Okay. Not very well, though. Um, so, what are we doing? So, first off, I'm just going to draw a line from the origin to this object. And we're going to do this in the editor, and the way we're going to do it is using on draw gizmos. So, uh, we're going to say, um, I'm going to call this draw vectors on draw on draw gizmos um you can actually be more specific draw position vector and i don't care all right i think i don't care hopefully um so Draw vectors on draw gizmos. So this is going to be using on draw gizmos. Void on draw gizmos. And what this is, is this is a little function that gets called when the editor scene view is in, in view. Um, and it gets called to draw gizmos. There's also a version called on draw gizmos selected, which only draws them if the object that has the script is selected. This can be put onto an additional script. Like you could have this as part of a script. Like I think we've done it once before with our spawning code. Uh, where it showed where things were going to spawn. So you can include this in part of another script, or you can just have it on, on its own. In this case, it's just on its own. So uh, first we're going to choose... Uh, I'm, I'm going to actually have a color option here. So public color color. I think this will work. Um, and let's default it to something that equals color dot green. Let's see if this will actually work. So um, we're going to do gizmos dot color equals color yay so this will allow us to set this in the editor and um what we're going to do now is we're going to draw we're just going to start with the line so um uh gizmos dot draw what do we have draw line draw ray i wonder what the difference between draw line and draw ray is yeah let's just do draw line and it gets it takes a from and a to. So we're going to use the from is just going to be vector three dot zero to represent the origin of the world, and the two is going to be transform dot position with the lowercase t. Save and let's see what we get. So I'm just going to place this on our cube or not. Oh yeah, I renamed it and didn't actually change the name up here. Save. All right, so now we're going to throw it on our cube. There it is. So we have a draw line that represents the the object's position from the origin. So um, so I want to do one more thing first before we start making it fancier looking. Um, I want to uh, make it so that this has a separate operation if the object is a child of another object. Um, so and maybe actually make it an option. So, um, public bool show um, relative location equals true. I'm gonna default that to true, actually. And now false. Flas. All right, so what we're gonna do is if we're gonna still use the color thing, so but if show relative location and and um 
Well, actually, I guess it doesn't really matter if show relative location. In this case, we're going to do. No, we're gonna put this on else. So in this case, what we're gonna do is instead of transform dot position, we're gonna use transform dot local position. And actually, I'm going to call this local position. so that it stays in line with what people are saying here. So now if we create another, say, cube, and we throw it up here, and we put this script on it, and we parent this object, so it's still drawing to the center, but if we click this little checkbox, it should now... Okay, so I actually didn't want to do it exactly like that. It's actually doing what I want, um, but uh, not for the end point, but not for the start point. So, so this actually is showing the vector that would be between these two here, but it's showing it from the origin because I didn't ch change that part. So what we actually want is we want um, from transform... Okay, so we need, need the parent location. So we need to make sure that this has a parent. So and and um, uh, transform.parent does not equal null. So, um, so if we have this set and we have a parent, then we will draw from the parent to here. And so that would be transform.parent.position and transform.local position. So save. So now this should change the location as soon as it compiles. Up, oh, getting closer. Maybe not. So if I put this at zero, zero, it's like right on it, right? Yeah. Why is it going off into weird land there? I'm gonna turn do not disturb on. So transform.parent.position and transform.local position. Oh, I guess I don't want local position. I guess I just want transform.position. save. I think I was thinking about using draw ray instead of draw line, so I'm getting a little confused. There we go. So this now represents the that, and if we click this button, it goes from the origin. Okay, cool. Cool. That's useful. And let's make sure that the color stuff works. Oh, it does. That's glorious. All right. So um, what I want to do now is I'm actually going to get rid of the renderers on these guys and remove component. And what I'd like to do is, I'd like to actually make these be arrows so that you can see which direction the vectors are actually pointing at because direction is a very important factor in, in vectors. So um, this is gonna be a little bit of math and we, I may have some trouble, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna get rid of the mesh render on this one. And we don't really need the mesh filter either anymore either. So I'm gonna get rid of that on both. So, we really don't need the colliders, but I'm going to leave them just so that we can see that there are objects there. So um, we want to draw the, um, you know, an arrow has little tabs that go backwards towards so that you can see which direction is pointing. So um, we're going to draw those. We're going to start by, um, I'm just going to work on this one and then we'll copy it over to the other one. So we're going to start by um, doing a, a dot product. So um, we're going to get if camera dot current so this is this is not one that we've used before and this is a little bit of a dangerous um, call um, does not equal null so camera dot current in draw gizmos if it's not null it should be the scene camera and so we should be able to see these lines drawing um, it may even be the game camera if you have gizmos turned on um, and it should get the right camera for what we're doing, hopefully. So um, what we're going to do is, um, I haven't actually done this before, so we'll see if this actually even works. I just did some research on this this morning. So um, what we want to do is we want to do um, vector three, um, uh, I'm going to call it uh, arrow 
head one equals, um, what is this going to equal? It's going to be our, so vector three, um, vector three position vector equals, in this case, it's just transfer dot position. Arrowhead equals position vector, um, uh, position vector, sorry, vector three dot cross position vector and the camera dot current dot um, transform dot forward. And then we're going to dot normalized and then we're going to multiply it by um, the tab length. So I'm going to actually go ahead and make a public float uh, tab length, er, arrow length, arrow head length equals 0.1f is what I'm going to default it to. Actually, let's do 0.25f as the default. And um, arrow head length is going to be dot normalized times arrow head length. So let's see if this works. We're going to do one more draw line here, except for this time it's going to be between transfer dot position and our um, arrow head one. Oh, uh, wait. Transfer dot position plus arrow head one. So let's save that and see if anything worked. Okay. So, so it's actually working. Let me turn off the other cube here. Let's just uh, temporarily turn this thing off. So this is actually drawing, you, you can see it's drawing a perpendicular line and it's perpendicular to where we're facing the camera. So this is very close to what we want. I just wanted to start with this to show you what the cross product is doing. So cross product, because we're taking the, for, the forward vector of the camera, um, we can use that to cross with this line and we get a perpendicular line to both axes. So now we're just going to um, draw it back just slightly um, by adding, so I'm going to actually normalize this dot normalized. This shouldn't affect anything for the cross product. So if I hit save and wait for a second for it to compile and stuff, this should work exactly the same as it did. Okay, so it's working exactly the same. And um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to um, subtract position vector times um, arrow head length. So this is going to subtract the original vector that's going this way with the normalized vector that's going back this way, and it should pull it into a nice arrow. Perfect. All right. So now we just need to do arrowhead two. So um, arrowhead two is going to be exactly the same. We really could use the re recycle uh, things, but I'm just breaking it out here so that you can see what's going on. Um, so arrowhead two, all we're going to do is reverse these two terms. So this should give us the other, the other perpendicular vector, and we should have an arrow pointing once it's done. Or I could be wrong. It looks like it drew it on top of the other one, so I was wrong. Um, what did I do wrong? Would have expected that to work. Oh, duh, I'm not actually using arrowhead two here. Save. And we have an arrow, sweet. And so now I'm just going to propagate this real quick to um, the other one. And this is part of the reason that I used uh, variables because now we can change the, uh, the position information to be, so, so this time we're gonna be going from transform.parent position so we're going to change that in both places. And we're going to be going to um, uh, 
transformed up parent position plus arrowhead, I think. Hopefully. Oh, wait, no. Transferred up position plus arrowhead. Yeah, that's what we want. No, we want... Um, is that what we want? So we want to go with the position vector. So the position vector, I actually... Yeah, no, I actually want the position vector to be... Uh, local position. So... Yeah, let's try that. Let's just see if this works. I have a feeling this is not going to work, but... So we're going to turn this cube back on. And yeah, I didn't do it right. So you can see that messed something up. So, um, oh yeah, we're not going from transform to parent position. We're going from transform to position. Just like before. Um, let's see what that does. There we go. Yay! We have two vectors. They draw. We can choose the colors. We can make the heads bigger, maybe. Yeah. All right. We can even make them inverse. Don't know why you'd want that, but we can. So, um, so yeah. So, yeah, I know this was probably not the most useful episode from things that you can do in the game. We we did play around with the Andra Gizmos. You can show how we can draw lines and draw colors and stuff. Um, and we did a little bit of vector math. The reason I'm setting this up is so that um, I can do a tutorial basically showing how vector math works. So, so for instance, uh, this represents uh, a mathematical operation of vectors here. So let me show you how. If I drag this guy out, we have this vector and we have, uh, so we have this position and this position. Um, and uh, this is not best example. Yeah, it is. Okay, so, so, wait, I already, I put the wrong one as the child. See, I'm already messing this up. Um, what I wanted to show is this is a uh, vector addition. Um, so, so basically, this shows the relative position when you're a child object. So if we're at zero, zero, we end up at the same position as the parent object. So when we are offset, um, this is a, an example of vector addition. So so this is a vector that represents the um, that represents a, uh, a offset of seven and three. You know, with, um, with some offset, with some additional from a parent object, and this offset um, shows how vector math works. So if you actually take this vector and add this vector together, you end up with this vector. Um, obviously I'm going to be having to set up more tools than this, but I wanted to get a start so that I have, feel like I can, I can start actually setting this up for teaching. Um, I'm going to be teaching mostly using, um, visual slash geometric, um, methodologies. You're never going to have to learn about how to actually implement a cross product because that's already in unity. You're not going to have to figure out how to implement a dot product. We're going to touch on both of these things, but I want to, um, I want to focus on what these mean geometrically. So that um, you can you you can use vector math more effectively um, in your application development. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to go ahead and put it in this configuration. Whoops, no, the other one. And actually, you know, I'm going to make show local location default to true. I think I like that better. That way, if I dra drag these in any direction, it would still work. So if I if I reverse this now. Am I reversing it? Yeah, if I reverse it, still, it, it, it does cool stuff. All right, cool. All right, so save, and hopefully that was kind of fun for people. I don't know. Anyway, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at drakfire. That's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, please support the show. Uh, it is at patreon.com slash cookingwithunity. We really appreciate your support. Please donate. Um, it's been a tough time. So have a good one, and I will catch you guys. Uh, you guys have a great weekend, and I'll catch you guys. If I don't catch you sooner, I'll catch you on Monday. Might do something this weekend. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. Um, anyway, see you guys later, and have a great one.